Hey everybody, today I'm going to give you a conceptual understanding, a model to think of, of how pulse oximetry works. Um, also, this is called SpO2 for saturation of peripheral oxygenation. And if you hear the term SaO2, that means that the blood oxygenation level has been measured in the artery itself. So they put a probe into the artery to make the measurement. And you may hear the term PPG, which is the signal that is used to uh, to collect the heart rate, and that stands for photoplasmiograph, hence everybody uses the acronym PPG. So uh, there's a little background on the terminology and nomenclature, and these devices are used in emergency rooms when you come in now for COVID-19. One of the things they do is they measure your oxygen content. Uh, I have a son who has uh, asthma, and we went in on one Christmas day, and he had uh, low oxygen content, and this is the first time that we realized that he had asthma and they used a pulse, a pulse oximeter to measure the blood in his, uh, or measure the oxygen in his blood. So here's a simple model that uh, we can use to understand how these devices are made. So think of this as the internal part of the artery, and I'm gonna make the simplest model possible. Basically, think of it as a thick pipe, and then this area is the tissue, and then inside is, is the artery, and this is where the blood is gonna be, and I'm gonna use a simple model to say that the around is equal to hemoglobin that's oxygenated, and then a triangle is equal to the deoxygenated version of this. And the way that these sensors are made, or these medical devices are made, there's, there is a light source called the light emitting diode that sends in light into the tissue. And this light trend, trend, uh, is transferred into the tissue, and some of it is reflected, some of it is absorbed, and then some of it is transmitted through to the other side. And there is a sensor on this side. You can also do reflective. But let's just keep the model simple and talk about transmissive. And on this side, you have something called a photodiode. Photodiode. And its current changes uh, as a function of the a number of photons that hits the surface of the photodiode. So it's your sensing element. And uh, the wavelength over here, and I'll denote that as this uh, lambda function, uh, is selected based on the absorption absorption rate of the, the analyte or the molecule that we're looking for. In this case, it's going to be, it's going to be blood, oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. And the way this curve looks is that on the y-axis you have the, the wavelength. In this case, um, let's, let's use, it goes out to a thousand nanometers, and, and that's called uh, near-infrared. And then let's plot from 600 nanometers, and that is orange-yellow. And the way these curves work, I, I kind of think of them as a crossing X. There's a slight hump, and then you have a curve like this, and then you have another curve that goes like this. And there, this point right here where the absorption rates, and this is the absorption rate as a function of wavelength. And this point is called the isobestic point. Bestic point. And then and these curves represent the absorption of light by either deoxygenated or oxygenated blood. And this curve, if we think about it, this curve is the HB, the deoxygenated curve, and this one is the oxygenated curve. And let's let's just make sure that we denote that. Here's red, so this will be the, the red curve, which is uh, our oxygenated blood. Even though deoxygenated blood is not blue, we'll make it blue. It's really, really dark, dark red because it absorbs red light. So, um, and since um, oxy deoxygenated blood absorbs red light, we put a LED at a specific wavelength of 600 nanometers here. So you have high absorption of red, and then what gets seen is dark red. And conversely, if you have oxygenated blood, and you shine a red light into it, the, um, there's low absorption of the red light, and so what is transmitted through is, is the red light. So you see the red, a, a bright red color for oxygenated blood, and for deoxygenated blood, it looks really dark, dark red. So that gives you a model for how to think about how the wavelengths interact with the deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. Is the reflected red, which is the, the oxygenated blood. And vice versa, over here you have about 940 nanometers. This is the, called the IR channel and this is called the red channel 
for IR, venous blood or deoxygenated blood looks really dark red, and so the IR is absorbed, and then, um, excuse me, the the red is absorbed, and what's reflected is the IR. So that's this this point out here at 940 nanometers. So you really use two different wavelengths to do SpO2, and you could use one wavelength to make a heart rate measurement. So the, if you pick up the signal at the photodiode, it looks like this. And so this is the intensity of the signal versus time. And the, if you find the peaks here, then this will give you the heart rate. And I'm asking you to do this in your project, so you'll do that. But what I'm trying to give you a background here is on why two channels, L2 LED channels, are used for SpO2. The data that I've given you has both red and IR information. So if we, if we kind of take this one step further and say, what happens in this tissue model? Let's do the tissue model, and let's put on the x-axis D, and then we'll have intensity here. And then what happens is absorption, as depth increases, the, there's an absorption and it's exponential decay. And let's call this first part our, the tissue part. And in our simplified model, it reaches the artery. And then actually, there's a different decay because it's a different material. And so these decays are called, um, are, it's a famous uh, equation called Beer's Lambert absorption equation. And so the intensity at the beginning is equal to the intensity the measured intensity, and it's an exponential decay. So it's e to the negative, and it's alpha, which is the absorption, which is wavelength dependent. The concentration of the analyte, in this case, deoxygenated blood or oxygenated blood, times the length. And the length, in our case, is we called d for the diameter. So that's the Beers-Lambert law. And so each of these different um, analytes that we're looking at have a different absorption rate depending on the wavelength, which is this signal up here. So we've simplified our model, and so this is kind of I0, and then this is the intensity through the depth of the tissue. So here's the depth, and then here is the I measurement over here. So the way to think about this is we have our difference, we have oxygen, oxygenated blood, and deoxygenated blood, and in the artery, this curve is going to change as a function of Let's change that to a dotted line as a change as a function of the concentration of blood or de, of oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. So empirically, what has been you know determined, and this is over many years. Uh, uh, initially, they tried to measure oxygenation just using the ratio of um, by measuring this curve here by using one wavelength, but now. We use two wavelengths, and it took maybe 30 years to, to really come on to this idea. And this is what is done in medical devices. They use an equation, SpO2 is equal to some constant, and I think uh, for our device it was around 130 minus R times 30. So this is the equation that's used. And then R is defined as the absorption of the red AC over, let me move this up so we can see, divided by the absorption of red DC, DC values over absorption of IR AC divided by absorption of IR DC. So that's a, that's a little bit confusing. It's, a, it's called a ratio of ratios. It's a double ratio. And why is that done? So if you just used one wavelength, the concentration could change based on volume. If you think about it, right? You just have an increased volume. And this happens in the arteries, the volume changes. So you need to have something that is normalized to volume. And the way to do that is to have a second measurement that is of a different wavelength. And so the change in volume is cancels out. And what we're dealing with is the ratio of really a change in the oxygenated, uh, looking at the change in oxygenated blood over the change in deoxygenated blood. And to kind of to make this come um, even a little bit clearer, let's think about this R in this equation up here for SpO2 is that if you have, for example, an increase in, let's do it over here, I think it'll be easier to see. If you have an increase in deoxygenated blood, and what this really means, you have more red absorption. Red absorption, red AC absorption. And I think we used A as the number. So remember that in our curve, actually deoxygenated blood 
at 700, 660 nanometers, it absorbs red, and so it looks dark. So if we have more absorption of red AC, this means an increase in R because this value is increased here, which leads to, if we increase R, we're subtracting that, which is a lower SpO2. So that intuitively uh, makes sense and agrees with our equation. So um, to summarize here, there's a simple way to think about uh, SpO2 measurements and optical heart rate measurements is that we have the LED and we have the photodiode and then we have the absorption curves. And something I, I need to point out here is that how are the AC and DC measured? And this will be, we'll be asking you to do in this project is that this is the AC from the baseline up is the AC value. You can think of it as the distance between the trough and a peak. And then the DC value is from the trough down to the zero value, the baseline. So that's the DC. And to kind of make this uh, a little bit uh, closer to what happens in the real system is if you have, we over here said that if we had an increase in uh, deoxygenated blood, absorption of red AC would occur, would be higher, and that means a lower, a higher R, which is a lower SpO2. So these changes in AC look something like this. So if we had a change here, then change in our uh, analyte, our oxygenation or deoxygenated blood, we may get a curve that looks something like that. So the AC value has changed. So really what we're measuring is this AC over, over the DC. And um, I hope that that gives you some conceptual understanding of how SpO2 devices are made and uh, we'll be using some of these concepts in your project to measure the heart rate as well as the SpO2 with the data that I've given you. Until next time.